Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me Craig Barton. Now we're tackling the mean this week and I have a bit of a problem with the mean and I basically I think I haven't taught it particularly well in the past because my year 11s these days um, see mean as kind of three separate processes. They have one way, one method, one process that they use when it's the mean from a list of data. Um, then they have another when it's the mean in a frequency table. And then they have another when it's the mean of grouped frequency. And it's almost like they're scrabbling around in their head trying to remember which rule do I use for which. They don't see the connection between the three. Or certainly they don't see it as, as deeply and as clearly as I think they should do. So I'm always on the lookout for ways to improve how I deliver uh, the teaching of the mean and specifically that progression between a list of numbers into a frequency table. So I think if you get that right, the jump between a frequency table and a grouped frequency table isn't necessarily that big. So imagine my delight when I came across this resource. It's an Excel based resource, which regular listeners will know. I flipping love a clever use of Excel, and this is just absolutely wonderful. So it has been <laughs> produced by, I'm gonna go for Ed Gore there, and I just think it's absolutely wonderful. So it's a single Excel file, and it looks like this. I'm gonna have to move my, I don't know where my stupid head's gonna go here. Probably fly away, fly away up there for a bit. So um, it consists of four tabs on this Excel sheet. And the first one is uh, starting them off with working out the mean from a list of data. So this, this is based on the assumption that students can already do that. So it shows them a nice little calculation here one and three add them all up four divide by the a number of numbers two and you get a mean of two but then I love these questions here which what new entry will increase the mean so what number can I put here to make that mean go up well if I put a three here what's going to happen well the means going to rise to 2.3 what new entry will change the mode I like that one what's going to decrease the mean and I really like this so if I just go back to if I just delete that one uh, what new entry is going to uh, increase the mean by x? So say I wanted that mean to go up by 1. What am I going to put there? Well, a lot of students may say 1, and we can see. But no, that actually goes down. 2, does that put it up by 1? No. 3, no. 4, no. 5, 5 seems to. Now, where on earth did 5 come from? How can we do that? And say I wanted that mean to go up by 1 again. Would 5 work again this time? Well, no. So again, you can see already we can have some absolutely brilliant discussions with students about this. And this is for me technology used at its best because we're using technology to enhance the understanding here and enhance the demonstration, help kids visualize it. But we're not just randomly banging numbers in here, left, right and center. And um, I always go back to Douglas Butler. Douglas Butler, the creator of Autograph, kind of an early mentor of mine, says you should never do anything with technology until you've given students the opportunity to predict what's gonna happen. So I'll be saying to students, I am about to put a five in this box here what do you think is going to happen next? So I love this. I mean, I could, I could spend an hour just chatting away about how much I love this, but we've not even got to the other tabs yet. So number two is all about ordered data. So again, my head's going to have to go. I'm going to try them down here for a bit. Can you find the mean average of this data? So I love this because students are presented with um, data that's essentially in a list, but notice it's been cleverly grouped. I like the way the numbers have been colored as well. So students who have only been taught to do it in lists will potentially do one plus 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 two plus two and so on. So let them struggle like that. I talk about this in my book. It's, it's Dan Mayer's um, idea of a little bit of struggle being a really good thing to introduce the purpose of doing something. So if I just come along and say to students, right, this is how you calculate the mean from a frequency table they'll be like all right brilliant but if I allow them to see how difficult life is without that technique then it lends a really nice purpose to me showing them how the how the method for calculating the mean from a frequency table works so imagine how difficult life would be if you always had to do the mean by adding up each of the individual numbers and dividing how many there would be. And once again, it's really nice that it's calculated and you can change things here, you can change the numbers and they automatically adjust and so on. So really, really nice. And I, my advice there is let kids struggle with this. Let them have let them have a couple of minutes of struggle. And then you can ask them these questions. How could you do it more quickly? How else could you represent that data? And notice then that is the seamless transition from that into this. So it makes sense, it's not being just imposed on kids, it makes sense, and then again, we can change things. So I can say to kids, if I change that one to a two, 
how's this table going to change? Well, the table changes like that. It updates. The frequency of the one goes down, the frequency of the two goes up, and so on. I can do that all day long with that. And then finally, the final tab, we get some practice. So we get students. Uh, you can type any number in you like here, and the frequency table is going to calculate the average of it. So I can say, okay, if I put a five in here, how's the mean going to change? How's the table going to change? If I put a two in here, which two uh, cells on the table are going to change? How's it going to affect the mean? I can then ask that tricky question again. If I want that mean to jump to four, what number needs to be in here and so on and all that kind of stuff. So I just think what a brilliant resource, but it's only good if it if it's together with the pedagogy. A resource like this, just like anything, isn't going to make kids understand it on its own, but it's going to facilitate a much better discussion and a visualization, in my opinion, anyway. So I just thought that was flipping brilliant. So if you uh, like this resource, hop back onto the resource page, leave a review, um, and I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.